On today's episode of Questionable Purchases because I have access to adult money, I bought a 27-year-old CNC lathe. Although, alternatively, it could be called how did you jam more equipment in your small shop? Now let's go with the first. Well, the obvious question is, why on earth would you buy a 27-year-old CNC machine? We're gonna skip that question because I can't even answer my wife that yet. But if you find yourself in a similar situation, I'll give you a quick little hit list of checks before you actually do purchase that CNC machine, just so you're not caught off guard. So, number one, this is made by Emco from Austria. This is called an Emco Turn 360. Because it's from Austria, this runs at 400 volts three phase. Now, the mains coming in my shop are 240 single phase, but I already have a giant rotary phase converter to run another CNC machine that I have, providing me with three phase power. So all I needed was a transformer to bump me up to the 400 volts um, that this machine requires. Not impossible, but remember there's a cost associated with that. So if you didn't already have a phase converter, providing you didn't have three phase coming into your shop, that's the cost of a phase converter plus a transformer. You could be another 5,000 bucks just getting the machine up and running. You need to have adequate air for the machine. So if you don't have a large enough compressor, that's another associated cost you need to factor into it. So you have enough power, you've agreed on the machine. Now you got to get it here. This machine weighs roughly 4,000 kilograms. So getting it here wasn't an easy task. It came out of a working CNC shop, so we had to physically remove it from that shop first and get it into here. Now thankfully for me, I have a brother and dad that just absolutely love getting that phone call from me about the weird thing that I purchased this time I need a hand to move. Um, this gigantic press is a prime example of that. Another fun one um, that we moved in here. So. Now you have a way to get it here. You have the, enough power. You've got air supply for it. Next thing to consider is tooling costs. If, if you can get a bunch of tooling with the machine, that's ideal. If the, the place has a couple of these machines and they want to keep all the tooling to run on the other machines, that's, that could be a very large expense for you. And in fact, it's pretty common that you can exceed the cost of the machine in your tooling costs uh, many times over. So take that into mind. Before you start making chips, you're gonna need to take care of the tooling. So the reason I wanted this particular machine is this has something called live tooling. So on the turret at the back, there's six driven tools, meaning I can actually mill at the same time that I'm turning. So it makes a little bit more complex parts. Um, that's very important because ultimately, what I intend on making is this little thing here. This is a axle adapter. So this is just a 3D print. This is um, designed and 3D printed here. This adapts a Porsche CV shaft to a Lexus drive for a little electric project that, I'm, that I've had uh, cooking in the back of my mind for a while. So you can see the importance of the live tooling. That will drill all these holes in it at the same time that and that is off center from the center. So the live tool is capable of drilling all these holes in the round part in essentially, you know, one operation in that machine. Now to get even more advanced, my intention is to cut these splines with it. Um, that is going to be a very tricky thing that uh, ultimately I think I'm gonna end up with some sort of a gear hob on the live tool to be able to cut those. Um, that's that's the advanced maneuver for this machine. So we're not quite there yet, but uh, we're gonna start with some simple parts first. So I'm gonna give you a quick little rundown on Emco specific. So this is gonna be about the startup of this machine, the startup procedure. Um, I'll show you the live tool working, how cool that is. If, if it's something that you've never seen before, it's pretty awesome. The one thing I do wanna cover is this has an old Siemens controller in it. Now I use Fusion 360 for all my cam, um, and it doesn't have a post processor that is specific to this machine. So this is 
The Siemens controller, this is a 810T, so it does, it does, it does turning and mill at the same time. So that post processor doesn't exist in Fusion 360. What I need to do is take the generic Siemens processor and modify the post processor with the correct G and M codes, specifically the M codes to operate the live tooling. So that's gonna be a bit of a learning curve. I've never done that yet, um, but you know, with everything else, we'll just dive right in. Unless somebody out there in uh, the internet world has a Fusion 360 810T post processor that they're willing to share with me, um, that would save me a bunch of time. I would uh, gladly take that. All right, I'm gonna show you the startup sequence for the machine and um, give you a little rundown on this live tool. So I already have the phase converter running. Got the air supply hooked up to the other side. If you turn the machine on before the air is on, you will get an error. So main power on. Give it a few seconds to start up. So first step is to turn the auxiliary on, press and hold the green button for one second. I like to put a part in the jaw. So we're gonna spin it. It needs to see pressure in the hydraulic jaw. Now before you can do anything, the machine needs to be homed. So the way you do that is start with the x-axis. You can see that in process green button. And next is your Z. And what it does is it moves the turret to its home position and then you're ready to go. So defaults into jog mode. <clears throat> what we're gonna do is run the live tool real quick. So we got to switch over to manual MDI mode. MDI. And before we run the live tool, it needs to lock, index and lock the spindle. So it won't initialize the live tool before the spindle's locked. Actually, before that, we're gonna index that turret. So to index the turret, we gotta go back to jog. And this is turret index. So that positions our live tool. <coughs> And to position the spindle, we want M19, and it positions it in degrees. So we'll do 12 degrees, end of block, and start. So it indexes and locks the spindle. Now it will allow us to run the live tool. So live tool on this is M83 is clockwise rotation. Speed is a H code, so we'll do 500 RPM. And start. And we have a nice slow 500 RPM. Now, if we want to stop, M85 is stop. Counterclockwise is M84. Again, H is speed. We'll do 
1000 and block and start. And there we got counterclockwise rotation. This does start and stop the spindle. Or M85. Right now, the shutdown of the machine is very simple. First, what I like to do is anything in the chuck comes out. So there's no pressure left on the chuck. I like to leave the door open just so the safety lock's not in there. And very simple, auxiliary off. Give that a second. And then main power off. And that's it. All right, that's a pretty basic overview of what we've learned with the machine so far. We got the live tool up and running. Now, when I made the deal for the machine, that live tool hadn't ran in 10 or 12 years. So there was some repairs that I did have to do on it to get the live tool back up and running. We got that sorted through. Um, we've got uh, everything except for the communication to the desktop in the office. So I've got to sort through that communication so I can send a simple part program to it and then we're ready to make chips. The only thing I have left after that is I had to remove the chip conveyor on this. So this had a chip conveyor coolant tank assembly that stuck out the far side another five feet or so. I just don't have room for it in the shop. So if I can start making some simple chips with it, then I'm gonna build a new coolant tank in the bottom and then just have to shovel it out every now and again, which is not that big of a deal. Again, it's not a production machine. So. Thanks for sticking with me so far. Up next, we're going to uh, work on some very simple turning programs, learn some tool offsets and some work offsets, and then we're uh, into making real chips. I'm going to start on some Delrin first, some Acetel, because I don't feel like crashing this thing into anything expensive. Um, we're going to try on, uh, yeah, just some simple turning first. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for following along.